Section 7.2 is talking about more inverse trig functions, specifically the, the three that we didn't talk about in 7.1. This slide here is just reminding us about the ranges of the inverse trig functions that we talked about in 7.1 and sideways L. So if they live in sideways L, cosine inverse, secant inverse, and cotangent inverse, then they give you angles between 0 and pi in quadrants 1 and 2. If they live outside sideways L, so sine inverse, tangent inverse, and cosecant inverse, they live in quadrants 1 and 4, so they give you angles between negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Make sure the ones in quadrant 4 you answer as the negative angle, so between negative pi over 2 to 0. This example, sine inverse of the sine of 5 pi over 4, is similar to a 6.1 question, so go ahead and pause the video and try this one. So you end up getting negative pi over 4. So the sine of 5 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4 is in quadrant 3, which is not in the range of, range of sine inverse. So you can't just cancel them and say 5 pi over 4 is your answer. So the sine of 5 pi over 4 is negative root 2 over 2. So now we have the sine inverse of negative root 2 over 2. That's asking where does sine between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 equal negative root 2 over 2. So that would be negative pi over 4. Remember, when it's in the fourth quadrant, we always answer the negative angle. If these two are the same trig function, if it's sine inverse and sine, then your denominators of your angles are always going to match. In this case, it went from 5 pi over 4 to negative pi over 4. So now we're going to do the same thing, but the trig functions don't match. So before, in 6.1, we always had the same trig functions, a sine and then a sine inverse. Here we have the sine of the tangent inverse of 1 half. What that's asking is, if you have tangent inverse of 1 half, that's saying the tangent of some angle is 1 half. Now, what does the sine of that angle equal? That's all this question is asking. This is a five, chapter 5 question that we've done before. They just word it in a different way. The only restriction now is if tangent inverse of 1 half, we know that that has to be in either quadrants 1 or 4 because of the range of tangent inverse. So in chapter 5, if I gave you this question and it was not on the unit circle, how would you solve it? Well, in that case, we would have to do a triangle. If tangent is positive and tangent is either in 1 or 4, the only place tangent is positive in 1 or 4 is in quadrant 1. So you're going to draw your triangle in quadrant 1. Tangent is y over x, so your y is 1 and your x is 2, so how do you find your radius? Just like in chapter 5, we're going to do Pythagorean theorem. So if you end up doing your Pythagorean theorem, 1 squared plus 2 squared is equal to r squared. Solve this, you end up with r is equal to the square root of 5. So you have the square root of 5. So now you have some angle theta. We don't actually know what theta is. It has a tangent of 1 half. What's the sine of that angle? Sine is y over r, so you end up with y is 1 and r is root 5. So on these questions, they're very similar to chapter 5 questions. Chapter 5, I would word it this way. Tangent of theta is equal to 1 half, and tangent is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. What is the sine of this angle? You'd have to draw your triangle in whatever quadrant and then find the sine of that angle. Now we're doing the same thing, except for I'm wording it this way. Tangent of theta is equal to 1 half. That's the same thing as tangent inverse of 1 half is equal to some angle. And then what's the sine of that angle? This whole thing in here is just an angle. You get an angle out of an inverse trig function. So now let's try another one. We have cosine of sine inverse of negative one-third. So that's saying the sine of what angle is equal to negative one-third, or some angle is equal to negative one-third. What's the cosine of that same angle? What quadrants does sine inverse exist in? So sine inverse exists in quadrants one and four. So the sine of an angle is equal to negative one-third in either quadrants one or four. What's the cosine of that angle? So go ahead, take that information, draw your triangle, and figure out the cosine of this angle theta.
So if you have sine inverse of a negative angle, or excuse me, sine inverse of a negative ratio, you know you have to be in the fourth quadrant. So you draw your triangle in the fourth quadrant. Sine is y over r, so you have negative 1 in your y and 3 for your r. Pythagorean theorem, you end up with 2 root 2 or root 8 for your x-coordinate. So now we're answering the question, this is all just theta. What's the cosine of that angle theta? Cosine is x over r, so you end up with 2 root 2 over 3. So now try this one, tangent of cosine inverse of negative 1 third. So you have cosine of an angle is equal to negative 1 third. What's the tangent of that angle? Cosine inverse exists in quadrants 1 and 2. So if cosine's negative, you're going to be in the second quadrant. So you draw your triangle. Cosine is x over r. Pythagorean theorem, you end up with root 8 or 2 root 2 for your y coordinate. So now we're asking, OK, what's the tangent then of this angle theta? So tangent is y over r. You end up with 2 root 2 over negative 1 or negative 2 root 2. So whenever you have something that's a trig function of an inverse trig function, and it's not one that's necessarily right easily on the unit circle, or they're two different trig functions, then you kind of want to set up this chapter 5 question that we've answered before. So this one's a little bit different. You just have the cosecant inverse of 2. When I'm given something like this, we're trying to solve again for an angle theta. We're trying to figure out what angle, the cosecant of what angle is 2. And cosecant exists in quadrants 1 and 4, cosecant inverse. So cosecant is r over y. So if we want to make this look like something that would be on the unit circle, it would be 1 over 1 half. So what angle on the unit circle has a y-coordinate of 1 half in quadrants 1 and 4? Well, that would be pi over 6. The last part of this is using your calculator to be able to evaluate inverse trig functions. Just like your calculator doesn't have cotangent, secant, or, secant, or cosecant, it doesn't have cotangent inverse, secant inverse, or cosecant inverse. So we're going to have to use sine inverse, cosine inverse, and tangent inverse, but it's not quite as easy as regular trig functions where you just do 1 over sine for cosecant. For instance, if you're doing secant inverse of 3, that's going to give you an angle theta. So the secant of some angle theta is equal to 3. Well, secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so that means that the cosine of theta is equal to 1 third. So now if we flip this back into inverse trig, you're going to get the cosine inverse of 1 third is equal to theta. And that is how you plug it into your calculator. So you'll hit second cosine, that gives you cosine inverse of 1 third. Make sure you know whether your calculator is in radian mode or degree mode. Usually we do this in radian mode. Just make sure you answer it the correct way. My calculator is in radian mode, so I end up with 1.230 radians. So now let's try cotangent. Cotangent inverse of 1 half means that cotangent of some angle theta is equal to 1 half. What's the reciprocal of cotangent? So the reciprocal of cotangent is tangent, so that means the tangent of some angle is the reciprocal of 1 half, which is 2. So the way I'm going to plug this in my calculator is that the tangent inverse of 2 is equal to some angle theta. So second tangent gives you tangent inverse of 2. And again, my calculator is in radian mode, so this will give me 1.107. Go ahead and pause the video and try cosecant inverse of negative 4 and cotangent inverse of negative 2. So cotangent inverse, excuse me, cosecant inverse of negative 4, that means that's equivalent to the sine inverse of negative 1 fourth, and you end up with negative 0.252. Notice it's a negative angle because we had a negative trig function, so it's going to be down in quadrant 4. And again, these are all angles in radians. Cotangent of negative 2, that's equivalent of, sorry, cotangent inverse of negative 2, that's equivalent to the sine inverse 
of negative one half. Plug that in your calculator and you end up with the negative angle, negative 0.463. Again, I did everything in radians, so these are all angles, they're just in radians.